Hello, my name is Phil Lewis, and my role is Commercial Business Manager for Photogrammetry and Structured Light Scanners here at Hexagon. To start, let me first give you a brief intro of Hexagon. Hexagon has a tremendous global network that reaches any place where manufacturing exists. As of 2020, Hexagon employs over 8,000 talented individuals, more than 2,800 being developers and engineers, and in 2020, we exceeded 1.4 billion in sales with over 10,000 devices shipped. We invest 10% of net sales back into R&D every single year. At Hexagon, our technology supports the development and production of 95% of all cars produced, 75% of all smartphones produced, 80% of all orthopedic implants produced, and 90% of all aircraft produced. We help our customers shape the future of products and services in all industries. Hexagon is dedicated to optimizing manufacturing workflows end to end. We believe that intelligent data coordinated precisely and timely is the absolute need for smarter manufacturing. This very reason is why Hexagon and 3D Infotech have partnered together. And with that, I would like to now hand it over to 3D Infotech's Rohit Khanna. Good morning. This is Rohit Khanna with 3D Infotech. I'd like to start off by telling you what 3D Infotech does. Uh, we're a metrology automation company that focuses on delivering standardized solutions uh, that provide a high quality customer experience. We have the end user in mind and we like to deploy solutions rather quickly relative to custom solutions that can take a long time. Our solutions are typically uh, metrology automation solutions that are fairly easy to use, that can be used in inline, atline, or offline production with an overall impact on your total cost, reducing it uh, because you have a better control over your quality control applications. Another impact that we provide our customers is the reduction of scrap. The reason that we work in the market today and are pretty successful is because the automation market is booming right now and there's a big transformation going on from the physical uh, to the digital world in the manufacturing space. A lot of companies have taken initiatives uh, such as Industry 4.0 or developing smart factories uh, that would like to monitor their processes on a regular basis, real time, and provide in-process inspection results so they can make very good decisions about managing resources. Another reason um, for our existence right now is the fact that there's a shortage of skilled labor. The workforce has um, changed quite a bit in the last few decades, as well as the part complexities have increased. So the skills required are in fact higher than they ever used to be. There's a lot of key initiatives going on right now with uh, onshoring and uh, such as Make in America. Um, and we are really aligned with those initiatives. Additionally, uh, 3D scanning and robotics technologies have become more prevalent, um, easier to deploy, and just in general, more standardized in manufacturing processes. I started the company about 16 years ago uh, with headquarters in Irvine, California. And since then, we've organically grown to provide superior support to our customers. And we've established a few offices uh, around the world to provide global support um, in Mexico and Europe and China as well. Uh, we recently opened another office in the US as well in Tennessee. We are the master distributor of a software called Polyworks. It's the most prevalent software uh, in the US. Um, we provide training and consulting for Polyworks along with delivering the best in breed inspection software. Our target audience is typically automotive or aerospace companies or their supply chains. Um, that may include castings and forgings, 
um, as well as uh, other industries such as healthcare, um, appliances, the energy sector, oil and gas, consumer electronics, and even consumer products. We find that all these industries require um, the next generation of automated inspection. Let's take a step back. Typically, when we talk about metrology, when we walk into um, a manufacturing company, we find that they're using uh, existing tools such as calipers or portable arms or CMMs, and they're pretty well versed in using those technologies. Uh, the focus of metrology departments or quality departments is really about accuracy and resolution to make sure that they can comply with the tolerances set forth by engineering departments. So we have a lot of experience working with metrology, and we teamed up recently with uh, Hexagon uh, to automate their lineup of scanners specifically the SLS product lineup, which is the Structured Light Scanner or SLS. And today you'll be seeing a demonstration of that. Um, this lineup includes a variety of different scanners. Um, the one that we focus on really, uh, especially in today's demonstration, is the Prime Scan. The Prime Scan has some unique features that make it very competitive in the marketplace. It offers very high resolution, so you can get a lot of detail on your parts that you're scanning. It has a very portable design, so we can mount it on any robot. And it's ready for automation. It's a simple plug and play type of scanner. It's also directly integrated into Polyworks for inspection, and you'll see that today uh, using the software development kit provided by Hexagon. The way we prepackage our solutions are um, so forth. So we provide a platform called Universal Metrology Automation, and we deploy uh, for small parts something we call the smart desktop. And then we have a smart station for the mid-sized parts. And we also have smart cells for really large parts. And today we're going to focus on the smart station where we've integrated Prime Scan. A little bit about the Prime Scan, the specifications. It comes in two different camera resolutions, uh, one with um, a, a 5 megapixel camera, another one with an 8 megapixel camera. These have different fields of views, such as a 50 millimeter field of view for really small parts, and then if you want a 700 millimeter field of view for really large parts. In our demonstration today, we'll be focused on a 200 millimeter field of view with about 12 micron accuracy. So the smart station on our UMA platform, um, it offers uh, the ability to plug and play any kind of robot. Today you'll be seeing the universal robot, it's the UR5 uh, E-series. Um, and also the smart station has a rotary table, it acts as a seventh axis. So typically the robot is a six axis robot, and then the seventh axis allows you to rotate the part around in different views where the robot may not be able to reach. You just rotate around and have accessibility. Um, our platform allows you to integrate it into an automation uh, beyond the cell that you see here, the cart that you can move around. It allows you to connect to PLCs and other robots for material handling and so forth. If you have vision cameras, you can add those as well. I mean, machine vision like 2D vision or cosmetic defects. So besides doing dimensional inspection, we can also do cosmetic inspection as part of this solution. The unique thing about our solution is not just the hardware, but also the software that powers it. It's called Streamline. So this is something that 3D InfoTech has developed to make it easy to deploy these standardized solutions. It allows us to connect to all kinds of metrology devices, robot, um, even CMMs that you might have in the workplace, and databases like PLM systems, etc. So Streamline has two different modes of operation. One is what we call a programming mode for an advanced operator that can teach the robot how to scan, how to measure parts, 
and also in operator mode where somebody just loads a part, comes up and hits the play button to go ahead and record it, to play the uh, inspection sequence. So Streamline is an automation software, but recently we also launched another software that's a nice add-on to this uh, solution. It's called Spotlight AR++. It's a plugin inside Polyworks that allows you to connect to any projector that you may have uh, using just a simple HDMI connected to your PC and then be able to project color maps and inspection results of all types onto the part itself. Here we have an example of a metal part. Um, it's pretty shiny and we're able to project color maps right on that. You can have an array of projectors, typically uh, four projectors uh, from one PC, and then project, uh, let's say, metrology guidance information onto the part. So both our software packages, uh, Streamline and Spotlight, have won awards. So there's something called a Golden Mousetrap Award that we won for the automation category for Streamline. And then Spotlight won the Innovation Award Thank you very much. Now I would like to introduce Tyler Cottle from our automation engineering team to present the smart station with the structured light scanner. Hello everyone, this is Tyler Cottle, automation engineer from 3D InfoTech. Today I'll be presenting three different demonstrations utilizing 3D InfoTech smart station with a hexagon prime scan. In each demo, we'll see how Streamline coordinates all the inspection hardware and software to create a fully automated solution. So without further ado, let's get started and check out the system overview. We will start by taking a look at the Hexagon 450mm field of view prime scan. The prime scan is a structured light scanner with a sphere spacing error of 7 micron. It operates by projecting a fringe pattern onto a part and uses two cameras to acquire data based on how the pattern is distorted. In the video, you can see how the pattern is projected onto this plastic air conditioning adapter and how shortly after, the data is then rendered and saved inside of Polyworks. With Hexagon scanning plugin, we are able to both scan and analyze parts directly inside of Polyworks. Now, Polyworks is the high-end inspection software that's used to analyze the scan data. It excels at analyzing point clouds and allows for powerful computations and reporting. The Prime Scan is currently mounted on 3D InfoTech's 2x4 cart with a UR5 Universal robot. The 2x4 cart offers a mobile inspection platform with built-in rotary table that allows for easy part access when scanning. You can see here with just a few rotations, I'm able to scan the majority of the adapter. But now that I've gotten the outside of the adapter, getting the inside might be a bit more tricky. So for hard to reach areas, such as that inside pocket of the adapter, the UR5 will come in handy and provide the mobility needed to scan the inside. As a collaborative robot, users are able to manually push and move the scanner around to properly position the robot without requiring extensive robot programming. Now the collaborative features of the robot also provide safety measures so that it does not need to be stored inside of a cage. There are built-in torque sensors inside the joints of the robot that provide collision detection in case the robot hits something or someone. So if the robot ever does crash into something, the torque sensors will trigger in an emergency stop to limit any potential damage or harm. Now, the safety features and the ease of use of the UR5 make it an ideal robot for these scanning applications. As you can see now in the video, it allows me to quickly maneuver around that inside pocket to get all of that data inside of there. All right, we're going to 
look at one more scan and then we'll move on to the finalization section. Once all the scans have been taken, the robot and rotary will move back to a safe home position. And the scans can then be finalized using hexagon's finalization algorithms. This will create a single mesh that can be used by Polyworks to analyze the part. So as we can see here, it's going to go through that finalization process. Once the finalization is complete, PolyWorks will then automatically align, analyze, and generate a report based off an existing template using 3D InfoTech macros. As you can see here, it's going through, cleaning up the data, aligning it to CAD, and measuring different features. Once that's done, it will then export a report. Now, inside of this report, you will see a color map showing different surface deviations. And you will see tables and snapshots showing different feature dimensions and hole sizes. And with that, we will complete our system overview of the 2x4 cart with the prime scan. In the next demo, we will take a look at an injection mold for plastic parts using the exact same system and processes. We'll see how the system can be used for multiple industries and we'll go more in depth on how the system works. All right, now looking at this new part, I want to point out a few things about our setup on the 2x4 cart. The first thing I'd like to point out are the little white stickers that are on the rotary table. These are targets and they are used by the scanner to roughly place each individual scan next to one another. Without them or, any, or another pre-alignment method, these scans would come into Polyworks all jumbled on top of one another instead of being neatly overlaid like we saw with the AC adapter. So we'll see here, the first scan will go through. And if we look inside of the small polywork screen, we'll see some of the small little dots that are those targets. When it then takes the next snapshot, it will continue to pick up those targets and it will overlay them on top of each other to know how to roughly situate the second scan onto the first one. Now, the second thing I want to point out are those screws that you see on the rotary. Now, these screws are uh, providing a simple fixture for the part to be placed in. Having a fixture in a repeatable setup is critical for ensuring that the automatic inspection remains automatic. If the part does not get put in a repeatable location, it might not be able to repeatably run automatically. Now, a good repeatable setup, on the other hand, will ensure that the automatic inspection works every time and will yield a lot better inspection results since you are consistently placing the part in the same part in the same section. So the scanner will continue to take the same data from those parts. You'll again notice that the little motions of the UR robot come in handy as you're able to 
move position and move the scanner into certain locations to get inside some of those small pockets that you see uh, for this injection molded part. In conjunction with the rotary, we're able to quickly and easily grab all the unique features uh, from this mold. Now, once the uh, scanning is complete and we start the finalization process, uh, I'd like you to note how Streamline is logging both the initialization, scanning, and finalization time for this entire process. The date and the total time are also recorded and logged as well. All of this information can be found and is stored inside of a text file. Now, as the analysis for Poly Polyworks run, I'd like to point out how all those little targets were automatically deleted since they were far enough away from our main scan. And for the reports, I also want to show how that in addition to standard color maps and controls based off of CAD, Polyworks is also able to run GDT analysis. Seen in this report, uh, you'll see some flatness callouts, perpendicularity callouts, and position callouts. Other callouts and calculations, such as surface profile and runout, are also available. And Polyworks will always run uh, following either ASME or ISO standards. Material modifiers, such as MMC and LMC, are also included as well. This setup with a fixture, targets, and part CAD is a standard and reliable process for inspections. But as we get into the last demo, let's take a look at how we can do inspections without targets and inspections without CAD. For this final exercise, we will start at the part list inside of Streamline. The part list stores all the physical parts that you'll have for your inspection processes. In this example, you can see each of the three parts that I have set up for this webinar. Now inside each part, you will see the different programs associated with that part. You can have different inspection programs for different part revisions, or if you just have different inspections uh, that you need to run on a given part. Each time you run an inspection, you will be prompted or can be prompted to enter a serial number, part number, or any other relevant information about the inspection you are about to run. In this case, we just had the serial number be the identifier for this inspection. Now for this inspection, we are not going to be using targets to do the pre-alignment for our scans. Instead, we'll use pre-made alignment matrices to align each scan after, each, after all the scans have been completed. Because of this, you'll notice in the Polyworks window that the scanning process is a bit different. Instead of building these scans up one at a time, each scan is taken once, finalized, and then delete it. Now, once it's finalized, it is exported to a, it is exported and saved to a known folder so that it way it can be later brought in and aligned to make a final mesh. We'll see this once the scans have all been completed. Now, the advantage of doing this process is, well, we get to get away from using targets. Because of that, we no longer have to worry about targets being in my scanner field of view as I'm taking a scan. This is helpful for scanning underneath parts where targets might not be able to be seen or for if there's ever a reason I cannot place targets on my rotary or on my part. 
each scan that I take is linked to a specific alignment matrix that is then called on once we do the final alignment. You'll notice that there is a bit of a white powdery coating on my part. This part has, was very reflective and so needed a spray of what we call developer spray on it. This helps ensure that we're able to actually pick up the data since scanners will often have a hard time picking up highly reflective surfaces. This thin white developer spray provides a matte surface for the scanner to quickly and easily pick up while not affecting uh, your measurements. Now, the one downside for using this method of not using targets is that it does take a bit longer to acquire the data since we have to finalize each scan uh, before it gets exported. So it is a bit slower than using targets, but it provides more flexibility for what data you're able to capture. Now that all the scans have been completed, they'll then be brought into Polyworks and aligned one at a time based off of that pre-made alignment matrix. So as we'll see here, the first scan will get brought in, then the second one, it will get aligned, and then the third one. And this will continue all based off of those pre-made matrices. Once each of these scans have been aligned together, they will then be merged into a final mesh so analysis can begin um, as well. So all the scans have been aligned. It's going to merge them all together and then bring them into a Polyworks inspector to run the analysis. Now for this exercise, we actually did not do the analysis to a CAD model. Instead, we did it to and compared it to a golden part that was already previously scanned. This is a completely valid uh, way of inspecting a part. And despite a little bit of a different initial setup between the two, the overall automation process behaves just the same. So you can see here, I'm still able to get my nice color map and with my surface deviations, comparing the new scan to the old scan part. I'm still able to measure distances, uh, holes, and any other feature that I ha would have for a CAD model as well. So you can see I'm still able to apply dd and uh, even though I don't have a CAD model and I'm not comparing to a CAD model. This concludes the demonstration portion of the webinar. I hope that seeing the system in action demonstrated the value that a smart station and streamline can add to a hexagon prime scan. Thank you. All right, thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, we are going to go into our Q and A session. Um, so Rohit and Phil jump in as you can. Our first question is, can I use any other software besides Polyworks for the dimensional analysis and reporting? 
So this is Rohit. Um, let me take that one if you don't mind. So PolyWorks is uh, fully integrated into the process for the data collection as well as the reporting aspect of it. So if you did want to use a secondary software, um, it could be used uh, after exporting the data from PolyWorks and do further work uh, in that software kind of offline outside the system. I hope I answered the question. Thank you, Rohit. Um, another question that has come in is, can I automatically load and unload parts to the rotary table? Yes, definitely. So um, notice that the robot that we showed today, it's a, it's a UR5E e series. It's a collaborative robot, um, which allows people to work nearby in, in a very safe way. So the way we've shown it is you would be loading um, the parts manually, but if you did want to put this in a uh, automated cell environment where you had another robot that was loading the parts, that's not a problem. That can be another collaborative robot, or it could be an industrial robot that's non-collaborative. Typically, um, you would select that robot based on the payload. Uh, so if the part's really heavy, for example, you'd have a higher payload. Great, thank you. And what would the part size range that the solution could accommodate with the hexagon scanner? Bill, do you want to take this or would you like me to? <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, great question because the prime scan se sensor from hexagon has a variable uh, um, lens configuration based on your part range sizes. So, um, you know, based on what your components and parts co consist of, we could uh, measure parts uh, in, a, in a small 50 millimeter volume up to a 700 millimeter volume uh, with the prime scan uh, sensor solution. Thank you, Phil. Um, another one that just came in is, will this solution be rolled out in Europe? If yes, when and to what price point? If we are able to answer that, if not, we can um, address that with Thomas offline, but I'll let you two take it away. Yeah, we can definitely address it offline. We, we do have presence in Europe. Uh, we have just rolled it out in Europe. So we can definitely uh, work with you to figure mm -hmm. out, you know, the path. Awesome, thank you. Um, another one that just came in. On the last demo, the part that was scanned in several stages, what could be considered the stack of errors due to such procedures versus using Photography. Photogrammetry. Photogrammetry. Thank you. That one's hard for me. Um, targets. Could you repeat the question? Yes, I, I apologize. On the last demo, the part that was scanned in several stages, what could be, what could be, I think that says consider the stack of errors due to such procedures. Okay, so let me take a stab at it if you don't mind. Uh, unless, Bill, do you want to say something to that? or? Yeah, you could start first for sure. <laughs> okay, I think this will be a combo answer. So, uh, so if you notice there were targets on the rotary table, we call them photogrammetry targets. So they will help us uh, in terms of avoiding errors uh, that might be uh, built up from image to image as you collect them, because they're pretty much static and relatively to the part. So that really helps a lot. And if you didn't have those targets, then there would be stack up error. So basically one image to the next, you're going to have uh, some overlap and then the software will do its magic to try to um, analyze the overlap between those and reduce it. And so that does contribute to some error. I really like having the photogrammetry targets in the background. And actually I, um, the SLS solution has um, a very nice tool during the calibration step to make sure that you can quantify those errors with the photogrammetry targets. So they can be sub five micron or 10 micron, whatever your um, system is uh, set up to be. Bill, did you want to add anything to that one? No, that explained it well, other than uh, outside of no targets, like the last example, uh, which was being used. Of course, curvature alignment is being used automatically in the background, so the part shouldn't be flat. It should have some type of feature and curvatures to over from one scan to the other to have overlap. 
um, on top of the positional matrix that's being used from position to position. Um, and the accuracy values could vary. I mean, these sensors are very highly accurate in a single shot measurement. You know, we're at half a thou, I think, with this big, with this, this volume uh, of a single shot volume. So uh, we, we don't see extrapolation, extrapolation of that error uh, from one shot to another at half a thou, half a thou, half a thou. We, we see an overall uh, volume uh, error at the end of it. And, but the curvature alignment is very, very well used with the sensor, um, and it has pretty strong algorithms in the background that maintain accuracies um, if you're using that process. Great, thank you both. And is the hexagon scanner an actual device plugin selectable with Polyworks or within Polyworks? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's we've shown it here with, with 3D InfoTech that it's a completely integrated device. Um, yes, it is a it is a part of the device plugin. Cap uh, capabilities of Polyworks, so there is a, there is that 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 avail uh, the available plugin directly from Metric uh, as well. So uh, it is a direct plugin, and it's not a separate piece of plugin that's happening in the magically behind the scenes. So it's it's all within Polyworks for sure. Great, thank you, Phil. And what is the role of streamlined software in the total solution? Well, that's a great question. Um, so Streamline was developed uh, initially uh, with the goal in mind that the operator has a very easy to use interface when they're running these inspections. So it's an automated workflow that's encapsulated in that software. It also has a parts management list. So you might've seen Tyler um, show you the three different parts that he had set up in the system. You could have hundreds or thousands of parts in the list with visuals on which part that you're gonna work on. So it acts as a very nice uh, HMI or front end, simple graphical user interface for automated inspection. But beyond that, deep inside, there's a lot of power. Uh, Streamline has um, this bi-directional synchronization capability uh, with all kinds of robots and metrology devices. So if you're trying to do complex tasks like uh, pelletizing, you know, picking up parts. Um, you're trying to communicate with any kind of motion control system. Streamline has all the bells and whistles to make that happen. In addition to that, a lot of our customers, uh, they want the PLM system to drive what's happening on the shop floor. So they may have specific CAD models with revisions, you know, that, are, that need to be inspected against. And so the PLM system is going to have hooks with Streamline to make sure that it's the right revision of that CAD model, for example, that's being used. Um, you can also um, hook up Streamline with uh, any enterprise database that you might have, where you want to archive the data. You might have a visualization system for data analytics. So if you have trend charts that you're looking at, or parts that are scanned in the last uh, 90 days, for example, uh, you could do that. So Streamline has all those hooks under the hood, so to speak. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Rohit. Um, and that was our last question in the chat. So I just wanna take a moment to thank all of our attendees for joining us today. And thank you, Rohit, Phil, um, and Tyler for presenting today. Um, and with that, this concludes our presentation. Thank you for attending. Yes, all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.